Okay, so we have just proceeded from encountering our Lord, the living Word, in the Word of Scripture, in the sacred texts of the Bible. We've just had that personal encounter with Jesus in which we've met the living Word of God, the second person of the Trinity, our Lord Jesus Christ, and He, through Scripture and in Scripture, has spoken to us and met us in our present days and helped to instruct us, to guide us, to give us His grace and how he wants to lead us in our present day through the words of Holy Scripture. We've had that encounter with Christ. Now the encounter with Christ is going to continue, but to move from our Lord as the living word to our Lord in his Eucharistic face, in his Eucharistic presence, in his full body, blood, soul, divinity, in the blessed sacrament of the altar. So we've finished the first half of Mass, the Liturgy of the Word, which is contained in the introductory rites and the Liturgy of the Word. And now we are moving to the second half of Mass, the Liturgy of the Eucharist, both, both of which would make up one liturgical celebration and one sacrifice at the altar. Probably going to have to break this up a bit because there's a lot of moving parts that go throughout the Eucharistic uh, part, the Liturgy of the Eucharist, a lot of moving parts that are involved. So, to begin, priest has just said, uh, has proclaimed the gospel, has just said his awesome homily, which if he's a good and holy priest, probably has a lot of Batman references or Star Wars references or Lord of the Rings or the Chiefs. That's how you can tell good and holy priest. And then we've, we've offered our prayer of faith in the creed, and we've offered our prayers for the faithful. And at that point, all the congregation sits down, and the deacon or the priest, if there is no deacon, goes to prepare the altar because the altar is being readied for the sacrifice of our Lord that is about to take place on that very altar. Also, to that point, the faithful are going to bring up the gifts. The first part of the Liturgy of the Eucharist, which typically, high, it depends on the church. Some parishes, depending on how long it takes to gather the gifts, will do the preparation of the gifts first, or at least give that a pretty good head start and then do the preparation of the altar, and some do it simultaneously. We at St. Therese, we do it simultaneously, that while the gifts are being prepared um, and the collection received and so forth, uh, so too then is the deacon at the same time going to prepare the altar, the priest going to prepare the altar. But again, de depends on size of congregation, size of church, etc., etc. But for the sake of argument, first is preparation of the gifts, in which the bread and the wine that will become our Lord are going to be presented to the altar as is the collection. And this can often seem, this whole part of the Eucharist, liturgy of the Eucharist can often seem um, kind of like a stalling period for us or kind of like fluff for us. We're waiting to get to the meaty part and we just kind of have to wait for them to set the table as it were before, like, you know, it's a meal. So we're, we're getting ready for dinner. And it's like, come on, hurry up and set the table so we can get to the feast. And we can have that kind of same apprehension with the Eucharist of, come on, hurry up and prepare the altar so we can get to receiving our Lord, meeting our Lord, receiving our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. But this actually holds incredible significance for us. And we all too often, myself included, guilty as included, I'm, I'm a sinner too. We all too often will overlook what this is supposed to mean for us because the preparation of the gifts and the, or the presentation of the gifts and the preparation of the altar is meant to have great significance for us, the faithful, because we are bringing up the bread and wine that is to become Jesus. And with that is to go the collection. Now, part of this is that we are honoring the substance material God's gifted us. God gives us the bread and the wine so we're honoring that, that earthly material that is about to become elevated and become God. So there's a, a sense of awe and a sense of reverence and respect for that which is earthly is now about to become divine in, in just a few short minutes. So there's that part of it, that respect that goes into it of the precursor. We know what's coming as we see the bread and the wine go up. But there's also the precursor with the collection. And again, we can kind of think of that as like paying taxes, as it were. And to an extent, there is that element of being good stewards. So going up with the presentation of the gifts, one of those gifts is the offertory collection in which we have given our funds, our tithes, and the like. 
for the church. And it is an expression of us being good, pardon me, it is an expression of us being good stewards of what God has entrusted us. There's the whole parable about the stewards, but it's us being good caretakers and carekeepers of what our Lord has entrusted. What he's entrusted to us is the church and the mission of the church. Christ is its head, but he entrusts us to carry out the mission of the bodily church. We're meant to be active. Again, nothing, nothing passive, nothing stagnant. We are meant to be actively involved and participating in this. So the presentation of the gifts of the collection basket is a further indication, a material indication of our willingness and our prayerful intent in being good stewards. All of this is an offering. All of these are an offering to be gifted up to God. So what's being offered to God is the very gifts he's given us to, one, become God, the bread and wine, or two, to be used for his holy church and for his divine will to be carried out on earth. So it's a it's God gives us everything. There's nothing we have without him. And in Thanksgiving, we're like, okay, here back to you, our Lord, what you've given us, we give back to you to be used for the Blessed Sacrament of the Eucharist, to be used for being good stewards of your church and the church's mission, caring for the poor, the sick, the needy, the chiefs, fans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there's another aspect to that as well, because the presentation of the physical gifts, the bread and the wine, um, the water, the, the collection basket, it's meant to also signify, and it, because we're, we're people, we're body and soul composite. We learn through the physical material things, through sensations. We take in information through our physical senses and we discern information from that. And we come to truths and conclusions and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the use of physical things is a great aid to us in learning. And it's a great aid to us in understanding truth. It's why God uses physical things in all of the sacraments. Why baptism, you can't just say words, there's the pouring of the water. The physicality of it helps to express the spiritual truth that is involved in that sacrament. It's the same with the Mass. Everything at the Mass is meant to convey. Every physical thing, every word other, every song sung is meant to convey, if done properly. If you start hearing the Imperial March from Star Wars, we've, we've gone off the rails somewhere. But if done properly, it's meant to convey a spiritual truth. That's the same with the offering. We are conveying the spiritual truth that with the bread, the wine, and the water, and with the offertory, our tithing, we are gifting ourselves to God. With that comes the spiritual offering of giving everything we are over to our Lord. Quick tangent, and I mentioned it already but a bit, but tithing is often seen as basically as paying taxes or paying the bills or just upkeep. We don't really like to do it, but we do it. And we can kind of get that from the Levitical priesthood in the Old Testament in Exodus in which the tribe of Levi foregoed, um, <laughs> forwent, uh, inheritances of land and titles and what such to be the priestly tribe to carry out the sacrifices and the priestly duty for the other 11 tribes and the other 11 tribes to help support them would offer tithing or one element of why they offered tithing was to help support the tribe of Levi who abandoned all such material goods so as to fulfill their role as priests. So when we think of tithing we can often think of like okay that's what this is meant to be is we're basically paying the bills we're making sure the doors can stay open the, the air conditioning's on that we have the, the nice aesthetics that are needed or desired to celebrate the Mass in a reverent way, which is true. However, there is another far more significant, I would argue, aspect in regards to the spiritual nature of that offering, of that gift, of that tithe. And it's the aspect of our relationship with God. Everything we have comes from God. Nothing we have is apart from Him or aside from him, we, we didn't make our own life. We had no say in the creation of our own life. It's a gift. Same with free will, same with the sensation, same with the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. It's gift. And how we convey our love and our gratitude for those great gifts is to give them back. We have the option of selfishly hoarding everything we've been given, our life, our free will, our vocations, our comic book collections, or what have you. And just being like, thanks God for the blessings, and then just ignoring him and taking it all away, like Smeagol, who becomes Gollum in Lord of the Rings, just hiding in our cave with our treasures. But another way, and the preferred way, and the invited way that is gifted to us, is to use what we have been given to convey our love, and to offer it back to our Lord as a designation of our love. That's the whole point behind 
all of this to convey the love we have received from God and give it back to him wholly, truly, and sincerely. That's what tithing is supposed to be. It's a physical expression of our love for God, that rather than hoarding the gifts he's given us because we love him, we trust him, all things come from him, we give it back. I use all that I get, get from you, Lord, for your glory, for your love, and to be your love for others. Here we go. It's the same with the preparation of the altar and the presentation of the gifts. It is meant to convey that physical aspect of bringing up water and wine and bread and the monetary collection is meant to convey our spiritual offering of ourselves. We are gifting to God all we are, all we do. And he wants it all. So in that downtime, as it were, and in that um, uh, fluff, as it were, we're just like, hurry up and set the altar so we can, have, we can meet Jesus, so we can have Jesus. It's meant to be a time for us, as the music's playing, as the hymn is going, as the altar is being prepared, it's meant to be a time for us, the faithful, that we've hopefully been reflecting on this and praying on this beforehand and then during the Mass to be like, okay, what am I bringing and offering to God spiritually? Here's the gifts that will become Jesus. Here's the monetary collection to show that we're good stewards and faithful and involved in taking care of the church and involved in the spread of its mission, whether that's through our money or our time or our talents. But God wants all that I am. So as those gifts come up, Lord, so too does my prayer. So too does the hardships that I've been going through, the sufferings, the pains, the sorrows, the losses. So too does my gratitude for all the blessings and gifts I've received, my family, my birthdays, the movie I watched that I really enjoyed. It is supposed to be an offering of ourselves to God spiritually. And those offerings all come together at the altar united to the one offering of Christ. Like marriage in a way, and marriage is often used by our Lord to designate the relationship, the dynamic of the relationship between he and his faithful. In marriage, that's what the couples do. They, two people, before God and before their family and the faithful, vow to each other that they gift themselves fully to the other as an act of love. Because I love you, my, my wife, my husband, I give you all that I am. And that gift will not waver in good times, bad, sickness, health, richness, pores, everything. All the joys, all the sorrows, it's all yours because I love you. One of the aspects of marriage. That's the aspect of the presentation. So that's part of the gifts. That's what's supposed to be happening for us prayerfully, spiritually, internally, that's what's supposed to be going on while we do this, not just simple passive waiting. Nothing in the Mass is meant to be passive. There is nothing in the Mass where we are just bystanders that have no role. It is supposed to be, you hear it all the time, it's supposed to be active participation. That's what it is. In that moment, that presentation, we're actively participating by giving ourselves fully. So then we have the preparation of the altar. And there's several things of regards to that. So the priest, upon receiving, or the deacon, the cleric, upon receiving the gifts, brings the gifts to the altar, and then he proceeds to make prayers and blessings over the gifts and ask for our Lord to find them worthy to become him, the Blessed Eucharist, and then all the spiritual gifts, the spiritual communion, to be worthy to be accepted. We end that moment, the priest in that moment, on behalf of the people, is blessing the bread that is to become Jesus, the wine that is to become Jesus, the, the spiritual offerings, the monetary offerings that are to be offered to our Father in heaven, and is imploring that, that God accepts them. So that's why he does the slight elevations in the prayers you can't really hear because it's, it's the priest of our Lord. Um, while the hymn's going, he's blessing them in that moment that they be found worthy to become God. Uh, then there's also two other aspects in regards to the preparation of the gifts, preparation of the altar. Um, there's the water and the wine that are mingled. It, that can seem weird to us. They're like, why are you putting a bit of water in there? Um, one, it's, it's meant to signify when Christ's side was pierced, the blood and the water that flowed from him, from his side, giving birth to the church, giving birth to the missions and the works of the church, that he poured out literally his blood and his water for us as an offering. So that's, again, for all the Christian faithful, for all the Catholic faithful that are there present, the mixing the water and the wine is, again, a symbol for us, a signification for us of, okay, that is about to come Jesus. That's about to come his body, blood, soul, and divinity. The, the blood and the water he's pouring out as an offering. We're about to see that. The priest will wash his hands. Again, as a, I mean, obviously the priest doesn't have like a hand dryer there or anything like that. 
but it's a sign sim signification that the priest is seeking to offer this sacrifice in the persona of Christ on behalf of all the Catholic faithful that are present, on behalf of Holy Mother Church and all the faithful, heaven and earth and the like, of all times, he's trying to offer that holily, holily, virtuously. He's trying to offer it in a way that no stain of sin or no imposition or distraction takes from him, that he is going to, his hands are going to be holding Jesus that his hands will be holy and clean when he does this. So it's a simple an enactment to show that his prayer, his spiritual disposition, is that what he's about to do and what Christ is about to do through him, that he can do this worthily, that his hands are clean of not just dirt, but the stain of sin or fault, that it's a worthy offering. Then there's the final prayer that the priest will one for the blessings in quiet, then it's going to be spoken aloud to the uh, praying to God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice, etc., etc. We implore, then, that God accepts what we are offering him. He accepts the bread and wine to become him. He accepts the monetary co uh, collection to be for the good of his church and his mission on earth and us being stewards, and he accepts our spiritual offerings of ourselves. That is like we've gathered it all to the altar. Everything we're given to God, spiritually, monetarily, materially, it's all there. And now we are imploring, God, Father, you see everything we've brought before you. Please accept it. Please accept our prayer. Please accept these offerings. Please accept us. God the Father, you loved us so much as to send your Son. And he loves us so much that he offers himself for love of us and love of you. That's the offering he makes. That's the offering God makes for us. Our request is, hey, we can't match that. We're human. We're sinful. We're fallen. But here's everything we are. Please accept it. That's the first part or the first subsection of the Eucharistic prayer, of the liturgy of the Eucharist. Then we get into the Eucharistic prayer. Part two. Actually, it's not mathematically correct. Technically, it's uh, part three, subsection two. Okay, I'm done. I'm just entertaining myself. It's sorry. Eucharistic.